take a moment to uh, sit quietly. And get ourselves comfortable. Although we are apart, we come together to meet with God. Let us recognise God's presence with us now. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of all. To you be glory and praise forever. You led your people to freedom by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. May we who walk in the light of your presence acclaim your Christ, rising victorious as he banishes all darkness from our hearts and minds. The Lord Almighty, grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Let's take a moment to think of the day gone past. A moment to think of others in our church community. A moment to think of those people that we haven't seen face to face for some time. And as we think of the day gone past, let us leave those things at the foot of the cross, those things that we are not particularly proud of. Those times when we've been less than the disciples that Jesus might want us to be. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your spirit and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. Psalm 91 You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, My refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, 
and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night or the arrow that flies by day or the pestilence that stalks in darkness or the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked because you have made the Lord your refuge, the most high of your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, no scourge come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder. The young lion and the serpent will trample underfoot. Those who love me, I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honour them. With life long, with long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Scripture reading from Jeremiah. You, O Lord, are in the midst of us and we are called by your name. Leave us not, O Lord, our God. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, Lord God of truth. I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. The Gospel reading for today is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, beginning at verse nine. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has none, no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. Few reflections on that reading from John. I really love that verse, verse 16. You did not chose me, but I chose you. 
when we think of Jesus choosing the disciples, what would normally happen uh, in Jesus's day was that disciples would choose a rabbi to be their teacher and then go and ask the rabbi if they could be their student. The student would choose the teacher. But here Jesus has it the other way around. Jesus went and chose his disciples. And if, and if we think what a great teacher Jesus was, he could have had the pick of the crop. He really could have gone and chose the dream team. I remember when uh, I used to work in an office and we used to do the fantasy football. You'd have a set amount of money and you pick your dream team, your dream players. Well, the problem was I supported the cobblers and none of my players were in the Premier League. I really didn't have a clue when it came to top class players and the names I had heard of would pretty much eat up most of my budget. So I would choose a random selection and then generally hope for the best. Needless to say, my team rarely did very well. I didn't really know the gifts of the people that I was choosing. I was just choosing because their name sounded good or they played for a team that I'd heard of. But Jesus chooses his disciples and he doesn't choose the best that he could choose. He chose fishermen. He chose tax collectors. He chose people that you wouldn't expect him to choose. Because he saw something in them that would be a gift. A gift that would grow eventually the Father's kingdom. And we know from our readings from Acts over the Easter period that these bunch of disciples that we read in the Gospels who are arguing with each other never really understand what Jesus is telling them and generally come across sometimes as not really having a clue. But when we read what they do in Acts, they really do pull out the stops. They do what Jesus has trained them to do. They go out, they proclaim the good news, and they grew in number. Jesus chooses each and every one of us. The decision is ours as to whether we follow him, but ultimately he's already chosen us. He already knows our gifts. He knows what we're good at. He has faith in everything that we do for him. It may feel at this time of lockdown, at this time of shielding, um, at this time of only just starting to go out and about again, that it's difficult to be a disciple difficult to go out and share the good news of Jesus. But we only need to remember this. Jesus has already chosen us. We are already his. He loves us for what we are and what we can do, even if that is very little at this time. Whatever we can do for Jesus is good enough and he loves us, and whatever bit we do to grow the kingdom is good for him. Amen. Save us, O Lord, while waking and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with peace, Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled.
my own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Save us, O Lord, while waking and guard us while sleeping that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. Have our time of our prayers of intercession. And I'll leave a pause after each prayer to allow us to lift our own prayers. Heavenly Father, we pray for your world. We pray for the coronavirus and all those who are unwell at this time. We think of those who across the world have died of this virus. Be with the families and friends of those who have lost loved ones. We think of other things that are still happening in the world that need our prayer. We pray for peace in places where there is war. We pray for hope in places where there feels there is very little. We pray for those who are persecuted for their faith. Give them courage and strength to continue to proclaim the good news of the gospel. We pray for our leaders for Boris Johnson and the government. We pray for the difficult decisions that they have to make. We pray you grant them wisdom and integrity to make the right decisions. We pray for our bishops and our archbishops as they lead the church. Guide them by your spirit so they know to make the right decisions for the good of your church and the good of the kingdom. We pray for those who are unwell in body, mind or spirit. Be close to those who need your healing presence this day. We think in a moment of quiet, the names of those who need God's close presence this evening. We pray for those who mourn. We particularly pray for those families whose funerals we have undertaken this week 
and the families of those funerals will be taken next week. Give them peace and comfort them in their sadness. Pray for our church community. We think of those who don't have internet, those we may not have seen or spoken to for some time. Be close to those who might be lonely, those who might be worried. And those who are just starting to get a bit fed up. Remind us by your spirit that although we are apart, we are one body and one community in your name. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Collect for this evening. Visit this place, O Lord, we pray, and drive far from it the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us and guard us in peace. And may your blessing be always upon us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In peace, we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. Amen. The Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. Amen. <laughs>